Welcome, everybody, to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette, and we're so glad that you're with us to stay curious with launch photographer Mark Usiak. Welcome, Mike. Mark. Hey, bud. How you doing? Doing good. Wish the sun was out a little bit more today, but I got enough for the other day when we were chasing that booster coming back. So, uh, well, Mark Usiak and his brother, his big brother Tom, who's watching. Hi, Tom. Hey, Tom. <laughs> uh, we uh, have have photographed over seventy shuttle launches and a couple Apollo ones beforehand when they were kids and uh, they become great partners of our museum helping us show you photographs of their launches to stay curious like this gorgeous shot on a Hasselblad that Big Brother took of a sunset he told me of STS-3 that we're going to talk about Columbia's third flight to space with two great astronauts Gordon Fullerton and uh, uh, Jack, Jack Lausma, Lausma. And you got some Jack Lausma stories you're going to tell. And Mark covered STS-3 40 years ago next week from start to finish, from yep. the, the going out there. So we're going to talk a little about that. And though you still look pretty young, it's something to think that you were 25 years old back then and knew everything about what was going on in the world, didn't you? Uh, well, some people say that. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about where you where you grew up, where you're from, and why you're here on the Space Coast this particular week, that we're enjoying you on Stay Curious. Well, I was born and raised in Lancaster, Pennsylvania in 1957. It was a good year. Um, Went to school there and uh, went to work for Armstrong, the people that make the floors, out of school, and have been in photography ever since that. I, I worked in the advertising department uh, and always had a camera in my hand since I was 10 years old. You worked for Armstrong Floors, taking yep. photographs of tile and well, I, things my, like that. Well, huh? back in the day, that was film days. Oh, we're, yeah. We're talking, uh, started there in the late 70s and... and uh, that was Everything some steady was filmed. income. Yeah, and that allowed me to basically travel and get down and cover the missions and, and with my brother most of the time, but there was times when one of us had either work uh, constraints or family constraints. So a lot of the missions we covered, like I said, our, but, you know, all as a group, and then other times we'd shoot it by ourselves. Like I was the only one, me and Steve Nolte, who's another member of our launch crew, uh, went out to White Sands for STS-3's landing. So, well, we're going to see pictures of that. Boy, is it a weird looking, weird looking <laughs> landing for sure. Uh, I'm uh, come. We are so giddy, almost Mark and I, because we just left the presence of Laura Shepard Churchley, and here she is with us and Jackie Dannenberg, uh, Conrad Dannenberg's widow. Uh, uh, right there, Marty. You don't have to zoom in. But there we are in the blue is uh, Miss uh, uh, Laura Shepard Churchley, who of course is the daughter of Alan Shepard and flew with uh, Michael Strahan and I think three other people mm -hmm. on that Blue Origin flight. And I've been in touch with her and she just showed up out of the blue to follow up on something. I've been asking her to come on Stay Curious. She couldn't stick around for it. But uh, boy, you never know what's gonna happen here in downtown Titusville, just 10 miles away from the Artemis launch pad. Met her a few times at Space Fest. She was a she was at Space Fest and also at uh, Astronaut Scholarship Foundation events. Yes, I was thrilled to have Jackie Dannenberg here, yep. whose husband Conrad invented the injector that was on the V two rocket, and then Von Braun's right hand person. So uh, we appreciate everybody enjoying our little humble museum here, and uh, we have had Mark and his brother Tom Usiak on. Uh, Stay curious. I misspelled your name. Is U S A? Nope. U S C I A K. Uh, a I. Uh, well, that's K. right. Oh yeah, that is right. That is yeah, right. U S C I A K. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Well, watching you. We're glad that you're watching us on YouTube, Facebook Live, Twitch, and Spotify. And we've got a program that you can search their name on in our archives on any one of those places. Uh, but without the big brother today, we're going to have him here April fourth, in fact, to do a wonderful program about how all those photographs were disseminated among the media and, and the VIPs and, and space workers and so forth because your brother owned a professional lab for several decades yep. in that area and he was very involved with that. So we're gonna look forward to April 4th uh, with your brother Tom and a little behind the scenes about those photographs that 
that uh, all of us have handled from time to time of the uh, how they become lithographs and so forth. So uh, we got a little bit of space history to do here, but did want to ask you why are you here on the Space Coast, Mark Usiak, this week? Well, I'm here to document some history this week. Uh, this will be the initial rollout of the uh, SLS rocket, uh, part of the Artemis program, which I just picked this shirt up about an hour ago, up mm. at Space Shirts, up All there right. on Route 3. And um, this will be the first time that this large booster is going to be rolled out to the launch pad if weather holds and the schedule holds. Um, they're looking 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock p.m. on Thursday. There's going to be a big ceremony outside the VAB, and then it'll take a good 10 or 12 hours to roll out to the pad. Mm -hmm. And it'll be there for about, I think they said about three weeks, for uh, some fueling tests, countdown demonstration tests. They won't fire the engines. They'll take it right up till before they ignite the engines. Mm -hmm. And then they'll drain the fuel out and then roll it back into the building and then go through all the telemetry and then they'll set a launch date. So they're looking, it's probably somewhere at the beginning of June, I would guess, but they haven't made that announcement yet. So it will all depend like on see. these tests, of on course, the, yep. countdown tests, which Marty Winkle was involved in on on uh, uh, tests, uh, for countdown the tests for the Apollo program, as well as his years with the shuttle program. We didn't give a shout out to Marty uh, there, but uh, I did point out to uh, Miss uh, Laura Shepard Churchley in the house of, <laughs> a half hour ago that Marty <laughs> wired her his dad's lunar module to get yeah. him off the moon. And, and uh, she, I think she enjoyed hearing that about you, Marty. Uh, of course, I always brag about him because that is such an important part of America's history and, and uh, to, to their, their national treasures to us, aren't they, Mark? Absolutely. And you never know who you're going to run into here. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a We're great We're becoming more and more like that. We really appreciate that. Everybody's supporting our museum. We've been full of, of visitors today. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about some space history and missions tomorrow. But I want to have, give a shout out there to Chris Callie. Yep. Uh, your buddy, Chris Cal, you're his personal photographer. That I he am. He won't go anywhere without you, it seems. <laughs> Most uh, places. <laughs> he has to have his life documented. Chris Cali, one of the one of the premier space artists of our times. His father, Paul Cali, unmatched in his uh, coverage of the Apollo with uh, uh, pencil, pen, and ink, and, and of course, uh, other uh, uh, oils Medium. and so forth. Yep. So, and we are partnering with Chris Cali uh, Art to promote his father, and we're going to make some big announcements next week about that. So, Great. stay curious about that. Uh, Marty's writing down a few other people watching this show as they're all piling in here to see uh, what uh, Mark Usiak looks like today. He's clean shaven. Uh, he's a real chameleon with that face hair, That's I'll it. tell you. <laughs> Uh, but Marty, we want to first uh, and mark honor a couple birthdays we had yesterday. Uh, let's see, we got the birthday banner on that, Marty. Okay, go yeah, there we go. I, I picked it up there. Frank Borman was 93 years old yesterday, and uh, born March 14, 1928, in Gary, Indiana. All right, he is the oldest living astronaut or cosmonaut. All right, he's the oldest person who's ever gone to space. His first space flight was a Gemini 7 mission in 1965, and then of course he orbited the moon, the historic Apollo 8 on Christmas Eve 1968. He undoubtedly could have been a commander and gone to the moon, but uh, from the history books I've read, he just kind of a little wore out about it. Uh, and, and he went into uh, business uh, as president of Eastern Airlines. There's Frank. Uh, do you recognize that? Is at the Space Fest uh, facilities in Tucson, in Tucson. that the Poor's uh, had yes. for many years to yes. promote the NASA astronauts. Marty, there's a question? Comment? Yeah. Yes, uh, two questions. Uh, one, just to, anyway. Uh, is there anywhere that people are able to view the SLS rollout in person? Well, you can see it. I mean, well, you're going to be far away. Yeah, you'll I mean, be, you, of you'll, course, Titusville, and where you watch the launches, you'll be able to see it go out. At the visitor uh, center. I mean, you'd what just, do you mean? It, no, you won't be able to see it. For the rollout, you mean? 
Well, yeah, you'll see it. You'll see the stick go across the, the horizon there. If they like, yes, you can go out to the National Wildlife Preserve, pay money to get into the well, it'll Merritt be Island a, Wildlife Preserve. It'll, it'll be, be on the pad by then. Uh, right, you're not going to see the rollout. It'll, yeah, you'll be able to see it gonna, on the pad. But as far as watching it, yeah, a good pair of binoculars. I'll be photographing it through a telescope, in fact, on the shores of the Indian Titus River. Film. Marty's more experienced, though. I guess you could watch it from the bridge with binoculars. It's going to be a hard view, but yeah, you can see it. I remember when it went out last time, yeah. uh, we uh, we could see it, see it pretty good. The gantry, they rolled the, the mobile launch platform out there. Oh, you could see that? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when you look at it, those, uh, those lightning towers are 700 feet tall, I think uh, 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 Mr. Medeiros told us, uh, president mm. of the Space Club, uh, Pedro. Okay. Medeiros. He was a, a... Yes, Marty, another question. Yeah, from Tom Etiak. Who's that guy with you, Mr. Marty? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't recognize his brother. Well, we got yeah. more trouble coming in here with, with uh, CBs in the house. Carlton Bailey. Uh, let's get through our birthdays here, all right, before everything breaks down. Did you know Frank Borman's picture is on the cover of Led Zeppelin II? <laughs> A 1969 album that is him he signed it right by his name by his face that's beside Robert Plant all right that's Jimmy Page beneath him on the, on the left and uh, the, the John Paul Jones the drummer I mean the bass player okay that's Bonham on the right and in the middle is Frank Borman's uh, West Point picture that they thought was uh, Neil Armstrong, John, Neil Armstrong. <laughs> he's even signed a cover not Neil Armstrong we saw on there so a bit of trivia for that 93-year-old. Could be rocking to Dazed and Confused. You never know at this moment here, okay? And we got another birthday yesterday is uh, uh, Spanky Fink. Can't make it up. That's his nickname. Michael Sp Mike or Spanky Fink was born March 14th, 1967 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So he's a, a Pennsylvanian like you, all right? Uh, he's a really an amazing astronaut, uh, a, a, a super amazing astronaut. Have you ever meet him? I have not. No. Nope. Uh, Three hundred and eighty-two days in space is the fourth among everyone. He held the record for a while, and then then Scott Kelly broke it, and then uh, uh, total accumulated time. Okay. And of course, it's uh, uh, Peggy Whitson has the most, six hundred sixty-six days. Wow. In space. And then the second guy is, uh, oh, is it Brown or who is it in there? Fails me who the second American is. Nine spacewalks for Spanky Fink here, okay? F I N C K E. And uh, nine spacewalks, uh, 48 hours. He's 14th all time on the space list. I think that's pretty cool. And he's the commander of Boeing's Starliner, the demo flight that will be flown. So that's pretty important. Of course, Boeing's two years behind after their, their, their initial uncrewed demo didn't work out so well. And then they, I've heard they rewired the whole spacecraft. Wow. And, uh, well, that's why a, they it test. Was, it was a meltdown. And because uh, I would have bet money that the Starliner was going to fly before the Crew Dragon. And uh, they lost a lot of money uh, <laughs> on that bet. But, uh, Michael Spanky Fink is 55 years old yesterday, so we'll look forward to him being in space. And in this date in history, on uh, March 15, 2009, Space Transportation System number 19 was launched with a bat on the side of the external tank. And here you have some pixelated pictures of that. Uh, oh, we won't need it any bigger. There we go, Marty. I'll take the B off there. There's the uh, bat on the side. Uh, you were not at this mission, or your brother, I, I recollect. I don't it was March 15, 2009. A gorgeous 4:43 p.m. launch that Mike Leinbach in in um, Wikipedia is quoted as saying it is the most beautiful launch that he ever saw. Let's, so let's see a picture of it. There was the Ooh. blast off. Where was that taken, guys? You probably know that location. Yeah, that's the, that's a remote the remote camera shot. Um, that's uh, one of the basins there between one of the lagoons. The ocean would be at your okay. back. 
And because it was at twilight, as you see, once it got in the air, the SRB smoke made a beautiful yep. uh, noctulescent cloud, is what astronomers oh. call that, or in go. sky people, a noctulescent cloud. Uh, that would be uh, on space history in 2009 on this date. So that's 13 years ago at 743. You could relive that people are seeing that here on the Space Coast. Marty, I know I don't put you on the spot about to remember this or that launch, but once in a while one sticks out. Don't know if you remember that one or not. I bet you Carlton does. Carlton? Yes, I remember the bat very well. You remember the bat? Because <laughs> uh, everybody felt sorry for it because <laughs> it, it was going to die. One of the other... Uh, animals that's fun to see on a space shuttle launch is the frog that goes across uh, one, one <laughs> of the, get the, blasted, the remote yeah. pictures in there. Yep. And, uh, Carlton Bailey, launch photographer's in the house here to, set, to support his his buddy uh, Mark Usiak, who's in here, going to talk to us about his uh, experience with Space Transportation 3. All right, uh, here in a minute, there's the... Uh, uh, oh, I wanted to go back here a second, folks. Let me get through the Finky birthday there and there's Carlton there <laughs> all right that was the one I was supposed to start up there's Carlton and Mark Sunday when we had Jeez. the pleasure to get sunburned and spend four hours like tourists watching a big stick of a rocket come in to Port Canaveral but it was exciting and and you're waiting for it to come on the horizon and all kinds of cool pictures it was a fun Sunday it was. Not many times these things happen on Sunday. Marty's got so, a question. So uh, there, there we've got that there. So go ahead, Marty. Tom Jefferson, question. Say, on the, the Frank Borman picture, do you know if the moon map there has the orbit tracks of Apollo 8? I'm going to say yes. Uh, that's why he's holding it up. But that is the moon. That is the orbital track of Apollo 8, which was 10 lunar orbits. Great question. Forgot the point that out him signing that and it says uh uh in the view uh, and from the crew of apollo 8 goodwill towards men and uh, uh god bless you and good the thing that they said going out at okay. the end of their live broadcast when they orbited the moon they had a live broadcast where they read from the book of genesis which they thought was a universally accepted passage to all religions that's why they did that, because all religions have a beginning of their time and a okay. creation of this, that, and the other. And uh, it wasn't a Christian thing or anything like that. It was a very well thought out thing. And I remember watching it, 15 years old, them going over the moon <laughs> and, and watching this happen. And, and uh, yep, so that would make that worth, Mr. Jefferson, probably five, six hundred dollars, okay? No, no doubt about that. So. But we're glad that you're staying curious, asking questions like that, as we have people watching us, Marty. I'm sure Robert Law is there enjoying his cocktail. Don't no. see Robert yet? Because Robert's on YouTube, and then he goes, he's watching on his big 300-foot uh, TV in there. But we do have Dave Stangy, all right, watching from Hawaii. Ophelia is watching from Normandy, France. Uh, Rocketman 1326, glad that you're staying curious. Uh, we've got... Um, Daniel Lazzarini from Italy watching us. Melissa Pope, she's at the Office of Tourism doing a good job to promote our region here and get all the people coming to Cape Canaveral and Cocoa Beach and, and uh, not Orlando. Yeah, <laughs> this is where the action is. Uh, uh, Shane uh, uh, Draz is watching. Okay, appreciate that. So, uh, and Cynthia Rossi. All right, we'll give a couple shout outs to a few of you there. We're talking with Mark Usiak, and we're going to get into that part of the program where Mark was a launch photographer. His brother took this beautiful picture with a Hasselblad film camera. Let's remind everybody, you were shooting film back 40 years ago in 1982. And I always want to remind people that it wasn't free. You had to spend a lot of money for film and then had to spend a lot of money to process that film before you saw the very first image. That is where my brother came in. Him owning that lab. Yeah, yeah that would get you some <laughs> He would be he would buy the film at dealer cost through his lab and I I can't even remember how many 
rolls, dozens and dozens of rolls, bricks. Well, you bricks. Know, we bricks. call bricks yep. of film was a twenty. It was rolls. a twenty pack. We called yep. it a brick. And uh, it was later just, on. We called other things bricks. Well, <laughs> but and him having that capability to be able to turn turn the prints around quick, being able to do our own stuff at his lab made a world of difference and it it kind of separated us from some of the other guys because we could get it done faster um i'm actually cheaper as well mm -hmm. but it gave us the, the technicians for the push and pull so to well speak, of, of we like, were the guys uh, massaging your negatives to, yep. to make a better print yep we were yeah. doing that stuff and well we got that launch let's go here to uh next is uh there's the STS-3, a little bit of space shuttle history. <clears throat> we had 10 shuttles launched the month of March, all right? The first four shuttle missions were all Columbia, our first orbiter. She was the heaviest, as they say, kind of heavy in the, in the rear end. Uh, she uh, was the first one to fly four missions. They were all test missions. They actually had ejection seats in the missions that were out of, I think, a Blackbird Mm -hmm. uh, type of uh, spy satellite. All had crews of two. Uh, uh, and and uh, so they, this was a, and so the, they had ejection seats. Indeed, they had the roof was supposed to blow open for those ejection seats to happen, which uh, was, if that happened where they were going ascent to orbit with the SRBs, John Young said we'd be toasted marshmallows once we, if we did not splat against the ceiling of the, of the it was a thought out yeah. thing that they're glad they didn't do. So, and it was the first one to use the robotic arm, all right, the Canada arm. And there, now these are all Mark Usiak's photos. He was just a young kid, 25 years old, like me, knew everything about the world and <laughs> photography. And what you know now, you wish you knew back then. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. Well, this is the crew walkout. That's uh, Jack waving. Jack Lausman, uh, who's uh, 80. Eight years old? Uh, no, God, don't don't say that. 80, <laughs> yeah, 80, actually, four, he's twenty-one 85. and a half. That's true. He's a leap year he, baby. He's a leap year baby. We celebrate his birthday uh, February 29th, so he's twenty-one and a half years old. So he's eighty-two. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, and then Gordon Fullerton, uh, eighty-four behind 84, him. Yeah. And uh, these guys he's passed away. Yes. Yeah, Gordon yep. Fullerton's passed away. He's he's buried at Arlington. Yep. I believe that's uh, John Young's uh, face right behind. It is right behind Gordon Fullerton. Okay, there. and that's George Abbey. And uh, George Abbey is the uh, gentleman in the suit. Mm -hmm. uh, his son uh, David. Oh, no, I was thinking Lowe. That's George Abbey. Yeah, I was thinking David Lowe. Well, uh, and that's how I would look at the guy in the blue suit, a blue Marty's shirt. Marty's got I was a comment. Years old. Comment, Marty. Yeah, Columbia was the first five missions, not four. That's right. Columbia that's was the first five missions. Okay. First, yep. Four. But I correctly said they were the first four test missions, all right, and then the fifth mission being was a, an all-out test, and then Challenger was in there. But, yeah, good. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, actually, I wasn't quite clear if uh, uh, STS-5 was – well, I got yeah. the scroll. Yeah, go to the scroll. How many – I think I, here? that had a crew As we five. look at the next uh, picture here, STS-5 was indeed Columbia with Vance Brand, of course, and uh, – that was the fifth flight, and then Challenger was STS-6. So good to know that and good to whip out the scroll there once in a while. So who we got there? This is, uh, I believe that's Scott McClay. He was one of the photographers that shot for one of the local papers, uh, Florida Today. Down, he's got down a Nikon there. mat. I can tell he's got a Nikon camera there on yep. a tripod. Yep, that's film. setting up remote camera stuff the day before the launch. Uh, a lot of these guys had their own sound triggers that they had made, sort of like what we did. There was mm -hmm. 10 different ways to skin a cat, and you could make your triggers whichever way worked for you, and that was the way to and go. we didn't include any of those photos but because yep. I wanted to show off his Well, Tom will be down doing that. Tom, yeah, Tom, Tom will Tom's be down gonna, showing all this on the fourth, the actual gear. Yep. That we're, what a gorgeous photo. This reminds me of like a 1950s sci-fi <laughs> with the the they had xenon lamps on it as it was coming out and that nice reflection on the VAB. Yep, nice Marty, shows. you're probably sitting in your car eating a bucket of chicken. 
Because uh, I heard people did that. Duncan, Marty, uh, Marty Duncan would Donuts. Do that. <laughs> he would have had figs. He's never done that. Okay. Would you ever go out and watch the rollout in your vehicle? Oh, yeah. I thought yeah. you'd get a. My car, you <laughs> Duncan, <laughs> Duncan Donuts. <laughs> I spent a long time in Appalachia, folks. <laughs> Everything I still hard to get the redneck out of me. <laughs> Fried chicken. Yeah. Yeah. No. That. Well, this is. That's what a we're gorgeous going. photograph. Look at that, folks. I mean, who wouldn't want to see that on the wall of the Hyatt Regency Hyatt Place Hotel? That I didn't plug them being our sponsors today because I've been so busy. But uh, we're going to have Mark and and uh, the UCF Robert. Brothers artwork on our sponsor, the Hyatt Place Hotel. Well, uh, that's a hard shot, by the way, folks. In with film, it's an easier shot with. Uh, uh, Digital, because you have more latitude, and the the film yeah. is more un, is not forgiving. I'm trying the to think. That was probably 400. Um, I ISO. I, yeah, and the whole trick with night stuff that's going on, you have to watch because your exposure time might be a half a second, quarter second, mm -hmm. full second, and if that thing's moving, it's going to be blurred. So you you had to watch because it wouldn't come out all at once sometimes they'd start bringing out a little and then it would stop and then they you know start it and stop start it and stop and then move it and it would go at different speeds so you'd have to you'd have to be kind of looking through your camera and you could see the treads moving on the crawler and that would tell you mm -hmm. if it's actually moving or not so you know when to shoot is when the treads aren't moving so well, when you uh, do this for Artemis Thursday evening, we're, it is going to be twilight, so you will have some beautiful dramatic lighting. Well, yeah, hopefully I, some I red they, sunset going on. You never know, of yep, course. I don't know but where we're going to be. The weather prediction is very good, I believe. Good, good. That's and uh, a part of why they uh, pull, they take them out in the middle of the night. Have you been told why? Because I have. Um, by actually Bob Seek, the launch director on the show. No, is it winds or weather? But yeah, the I weather mean? is is usually less uh, uh, severe winds and so forth. The weather is the main factor. Triple T's told us this. Okay. That it's the most vulnerable of, of, of all time, of course, because it's not being covered by anything. So, uh, and at night, the winds are calmer than during the day. So any kind of wind activity you would have in there, and, uh, and you don't have the heat factor Okay. Building up and, and, and stuff like that. But uh, that's what Triple T and Bob Seek said. I love this picture, uh, mostly for that TV monitor in the foreground, <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, which was cutting edge in 1982. Well, that's an uh, and look at the, look at the, it's even got the turn dials on yep. it there to turn the channel there. No remote. Uh, so uh, you don't see a, of course, computer in sight. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the old. NASA bleachers. Bleachers. Those bleachers are long gone, but they'd have hundreds of uh, guys with typewriters, and they'd have their phones set up, so they'd be calling. Look up Google typewriter. Calling, anybody calling under Calling their stories in. And, Marty, would uh, you circle the pad there, sir, sir, for me, please? And it's T minus 45 minutes, 41 seconds. Yep. So things are starting to get ripe about that. Time, well, this like is I when said. they the shuttle program was still new. I'm not sure the amount of people there. At that time, there's the pad, Marty. Thank you. But uh, I mean, You're they they pull a couple thousand. Three and a half miles away, Marty. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but they pull a couple thousand for yeah. for sh early shuttle launches like that. And uh, so that's a cool picture. There's the launch that you took from a remote camera. That's actually from the press site. Oh, from the press site. That's, okay. that's a that's a Hasselblad with uh, that might be the 350 or. So going back here, where yep. Marty circled the press. Uh, uh, the pad 39A, yep. all right, which is now leased by Jeff Bezos, or, I mean, Elon Musk for his uh, uh, crew. Uh, he does a lot, he does his crew mm -hmm. Dragon launches off there and others. Um, there it is with a, what, that, I'm, 400 millimeter lens? Well, uh, the Hasselblad, you have to see if my brother's watching. He can tell. That might be the... Nah, we he's a, bored. He's bailed out already. We've <laughs> the lost 250 him. or the 500. We had a bunch of Hasselblad lenses, and and um, we would put out for the remote camera since they were so close. We'd either put like a like an 80 millimeter or a 150 millimeter out at the launch pad, and then we keep the big telephotos. I think we had a, I think we had, I know we had a 500. It might be a 500 mm -hmm. Hasselblad shot. That costs a little bit for that class, yeah. Marty. 
question. Yeah, Dave's saying he wants to know, did the Santa Fire roll out at night? Uh, well, there was a bunch of those. I, 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 I that's, a, that's a really that's good a, question. We I, might research that, Dave. Stingy, yeah, I, I re, all the ones the, I remember. Uh, Apollo 16, 50 then. What do you ones. say, Marty? You're the one they, to answer they that. The they were all, they went out at dawn. I remember they went out uh -huh. real early in the morning and, and they were out at the pad. Some of the shuttles went out early in the morning. Yep. Well, the one picture that fit to the, fit the oh, the mist of star. Challenger. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's a classic. You're right. They weren't all taken STS out. STS-3 went out, even though that looked like it was night when it rolled out. Yeah. By the time it got, a, you know, a quarter of the way out. But weather was the big deal, of course, because <laughs> it is vulnerable. And you can now imagine that. And uh, uh, now, are you going to be able to walk alongside of Artemis? What's the plan? You don't I know? I don't know yet. We pick up uh, credentials tomorrow. Uh -huh. And I think they'll have a list for us of uh, do's and don'ts. And, do's and, uh, don'ts and, yep. and uh Please comment about how different it is after the catastrophe of, of uh, uh, September 11th, 2001. Well, uh, NASA had changed their procedures, I think, a lot after that. Um, with the advent of COVID, even more so because they're restricting the number of people um, that came that could mm -hmm. come from a certain organization. But it's a so, lot looser in the. Uh, 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 yeah, back the, back the, then, yeah. The but I mean, that's then, uh, you know, I don't know what they're going to do. There's going to be thousands and thousands of requests. Marty, right. another question. Glad everybody's watching on YouTube, Twitch, Spotify. In oh, there's really a comment. I'm sorry. Uh, Brother Tom says Apollo 13 rolled out at night. Okay. Okay. All Wasn't right. there for that. Nope. We our first mission was Apollo 15. Beautiful photograph there. Uh, Almost clear in the tower. That's only about, seriously, less than three seconds into flight. Probably that boogies off the pad. It sure does. Address that. You got to. These are these are not. Uh, these are sound activated remote Hasselblads in our weatherproof tubing mm -hmm. that uh, Steve Noldy and Bob Preston built for us. And uh, the sound trigger was firing. You had 12 shots. There was 12 shots on this roll, and we've got this. This STS-3 was really one of our best missions because everything worked fine all the cameras worked fine beautiful the light. weather was good the lighting was perfect and except yet, for the landing the weather wasn't so well, good at edwards air force base so. white sands <laughs> i mean no but at edwards that's why they yeah. went to white sands yeah. the weather was good and uh wanted to just throw out there we're talking this Hasselblad camera a lot of you know kodak and uh, uh, uh nikon, nikon and, and the, the good starter camera cannons and uh, I'm joking, of course. <laughs> right. uh, and Sony's and uh, whatnot. Hasselblad is the Lexus, the the uh, Maserati of the cameras of the, of the, the back in the day. And they were not 35 millimeter, but twice as big a film, which means you can have better resolution. And that's the same thing as the megapixels that you talk about. The 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 Hasselblad had the biggest megapixel uh, if you want to equate it to today's digital camera so that's why these pictures look excellent and, and they're square and they're square also and it was also the camera that was taken to the moon and wouldn't we love to go back and and get How a couple of those, those Hasselblads and put a new back on them because they'd probably be fine with a little bit of uh, grease on them on the lenses go. maybe well things didn't work out so well for the landing at Edwards Air Force Base, and let's just uh, uh, let me go back here a second uh, um, with the uh, consult the scroll. My mission here. <laughs> uh, oh, that's you back Who's on that there. Snow we'll go buddy. back. It looks like he's in snow, but no, this mission of uh, eight days. All right, they spent these two guys spent eight days together. Uh, they really put the. Uh, they did some real experiments. Uh, there was a couple little top secret things going on there too. But they had some uh, solar X-ray uh, and, and solar ultraviolet uh, packages, contamination monitor package, foil abrasion package, aerodynamic coefficient packages, heat flex, bio tests, all kinds of things they did on themselves uh, biometrically for eight days, which was a long mission. And uh, then when they wanted to come back, well, we were scheduled for six and a half days when they wanted to land at Edwards Air Force Base, they had an unusual monsoon rains that flooded it, and it never cleared up. 
And they could have landed them at Kennedy because the three-mile runway was ready, but these two guys were test pilots that had landed probably thousands of times at White Sands. So White Sands, New Mexico was chosen. And, it, and we had Hugh Harris on here a couple Mondays ago, the voice of NASA, talking about the caravan of 41 rail cars that took equipment out there and how they had to lift it up. I didn't have time to put mm. all those pictures on here because we wanted to make fun of you looking like an <laughs> Eskimo in the middle of a desert. Hey, I, I was the only one that was prepared for that. I'll have you know. I had you, goggles on. I had gloves, I had a winter coat. Everybody's out there shivering and because it was March and it's cool out there sand in the desert. Out of their face. Uh, they and, actually yep. landed at 9:04 a.m. All right, so yep. you were out there before dawn, I, I imagine. Absolutely. Yep. And uh, these, what are all these people behind you? Well, that's other media. There, I think there's invited guests, some contractor people. It was a, it was a really good crowd uh, uh, for landing. But they had moved the crowd from Edwards Air Force Base which is how far apart 400 miles or something i don't know i think if you may have my brother may type in on this i think they knew that it was going to land at white sands a couple days before yeah right they did they, i guess and they, they, and they yeah so, it, it, I, a day before yep i know it's a beautiful zero halliburton case yep. they're laying on the bottom there uh, kept those hasselblads uh, nice that, and that's clean. how you kept i my associated <laughs> press boss had leicas in those okay when i got to carry a zero halliburton i was tough Tough 25-year-old dog on the totem pole there because uh, uh, Leica was the other uh, yep. outstanding camera that was 35 millimeter. And that box there behind my right leg looks, yeah. I, is the box that held the long lens, the 500 millimeter, wow. 35 millimeter camera. And when your brother lens. processed these pictures, he says, "You got that laying on the sand out there in there." <laughs> What are you talking about? You could stand on that box. That's yeah, I know, but you're hoping sand don't was. blow in there. Nah, nah, uh, it, was, it was good. There's yep. another uh, yep. cheesecake shot of you out there at White Sands <clears throat> well, Airport. That that black thing over is is over the 35 millimeter, the Canon camera uh -huh. with the 500 on, and I'm standing there. That's with the Hasselblad and the 500 millimeter. Well, this was so, your perch for the landing, which you've never seen before out there. How did you know? They told you what direction it was coming <clears> from, probably. Yep, huh? yep. And you could tell they gave you a track, and it said, well, it's going to come over those mountains. It's going to spin around and, and come over this way, and it's going to land from right to left. Now we're going to see some one-of-a-kind photos by Mark Usiak after we take this comment from Marty Winkle. Brother Tom again says, White Sands was designated the landing site before launch. Before launch. Okay. All righty. Because they knew it was flooded. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to consult another scroll on that one there, Tom, but uh, <laughs> and call you later later tonight. But, <laughs> don't mess uh, with him. He has, a, he has a mind like a steel don't trap mess with him. when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got the hook for his show. <laughs> And tell him this is your show, by the way. Well, no, I, I, hey, no a big brother I, to... he, he's got the mind for some of this stuff. <laughs> no, I, I could no, take I the good it, shots. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, I do have some of my history uh, uh, juxtaposed <clears> a time <throat> or two, and uh, that's what Marty's here to straighten me out for. Well, what we had here, there was they had a flatbed that was behind. Well, you can see him. Steve actually went up. Uh, it was Steve Nolan. Oh, there, and there's I. dozens of photographers behind you here. Yep, uh, and they, they had a flatbed truck. So there was a row of probably 30 or 40 guys standing in a row behind me. And Steve went up there and he, because you can see he's looking down. Gotcha, on me. yeah. So um, there was so much media out there that they, some guys wanted to be higher. And I guess. Well, you got a nice rope. sun angle, of course, uh, yep. c coming in there, which is always important. You got one of a kind photos by Mark Usiak mm. here. The timing of this has got to be incredible. The spaceship is coming in at uh, 250 miles an hour. They didn't have speed brakes on the rudders back then, I don't think, or did they? Mm -hmm. I know they, they didn't, didn't have, have the parachute. They, yeah, they had the brakes, uh, but they didn't and have the so, parachute. And uh, so he's coming up over the, uh, is that the Wasatch, San Andreas? The Wasatch Mountain? Mountains. The Wasatch, Wasatch, Wasatch yep. Mountains. Up there, like 50 miles in the background. And there's touched down. The wheels have just touched. And I want to, folks, those are not pylons standing there. Marty's circle 
those two crazy guys sitting there, they got to be within no, a thousand we feet. We were envious of them. We're looking through there and we saw Look at those these guys. photographers <laughs> that are obviously like, Damn, very I wish massive I was privileged that. photographers uh, that said, you want to risk your life that uh, uh, Jack Lawson was going to set this thing down where we tell him it's going to set it down? Well, he's one of the best pilots out there, so I'd, I'd, have, I'd stand out there in a heartbeat. And we got a chance to meet Jack at the 13th, Apollo 13th yep. reunion that they finally held couple months ago uh but that is whizzing by at some speed we want to talk about folks and then you get the uh the, the <clears> wheel <throat> touchdown of the, the, the first wheel and what's that following them there well it's actually in front there it's ch it's a chase plane t-38 um i'm not sure if it's in your scroll who was flying in that um no. usually john young i think um, that plane's between them. you and yep. the space and the space uh, shuttle. shuttle. Yep, but it was what they call a chase plane. So yeah, it would be an was... astronaut and, and probably young or uh, Crippen flying yep. it. Or, uh, but that's the T-38 mm -hmm. that, that is the private taxi to all astronauts. Yep. Uh, if they don't know learn how to fly it, they want to and probably will. Or they're all, there's, it's, it's a double-seater in the back okay. uh, to go to all over the country to the contractors and fly back and forth from... Houston to uh, cave. Uh, the, yep. the cave, and that's a little bit, uh, but gorgeous coming down. Now, what was the anomaly that is always talked about, uh, even to the end of Challenger? God bless uh, the bird and her crew uh, with the STS-107 that everyone kept talking about every time she went to space. Sand white sand it was like powder it was like talcum powder and it was in my camera case for years it was in the shuttle until its last mission it was in my teeth that day it was just blowing everywhere <laughs> and it was kind of crazy and I'll, it's crazy the things you remember the stupid little things but when that wind was blowing the day before when they originally were going to land it and it got waved off the sand was blowing against you that every time you would touch something, you would get a static charge. So you'd touch the knob on the on the door handle, and you'd get a shock. Really? Like you'd rub your feet on carpet. This thing, it was, I mean, the winds were fine on landing day. It was the day before because it was supposed to land, you know, that sixth day, and then they stayed mm -hmm. up that extra day. So everybody went out there, and we were standing there, and the wind's blowing, and I'm laughing at everybody. I got my goggles on. I can see fine, but every time you go to – touch something metal you would get shocked and hmm. then they put everybody back on the bus and they said we're going to come back out tomorrow and which we did and and got these shots but yeah that sand was in there well triple t would tell you i mean he he was pulling it out he'd see it in there and yeah the they, stories yeah, too. The sand would appear out of the the, the cabin They'd crew areas, just yep. all kinds of stuff of course they would still freak out over it being silicon and, mm -hmm. and short circuiting things but it yep. eventually never did but uh well, gorgeous pictures there. Thank you. That's a tough situation because of the brightness of everything. And to get the, the mountains, which, by the way, these mountains uh, could be on Mars, uh, the photos that the rovers are taking. These Mar <laughs> has kind of look like we're curious. They got the right color. Yeah. Are on there, well. so. uh, but that is an astounding photograph that I've never seen printed anywhere before. Well, the one before that. The, that one was my first magazine cover. That okay. was uh, they, they cropped it vertically. The wheels have not come out. No, nope. landing gear landing still. Landing gear comes still out just up. at the last, yep. last second possible. But that, now, uh, that, there's a picture in between that. that yep, we, the shot. There was a series. There was 36. This, again, we're going back to film. So you've uh -huh. got 36 shots on the roll. There's no changing yeah. film. And uh, these, the other, the wider version of that shot, that one Steve took with the Hasselblad. So that was his view. Through the Hasselblad. Yep. And then the other ones were me because I had a longer mm -hmm. lens mm -hmm. and it was, it was just more magnification. So, Marty, you got another comment? Brother Tom, T38 <laughs> was a photo chase plane. Okay. Does oh, it was a photo chase plane, T38. Okay. Okay. Very good. Ask, does he know who was in it? Was there any astronauts in Bruce it? Bruce Johnson's been watching Stay Curious. Thank you, okay, Bruce. Bruce. Esau Nava. Has been watching. We need to see where you're from, Esau. Tom Jefferson, thank you. We got Professor Keith Sewell has been watching. Uh, we said hi to uh, uh, Daniel Lazzarini. He's in Italy. He's in, a, I think, a science observatory up there. 
uh, Brad uh, McKinnon. Oh, yeah, Brad. You know Brad? I sure do. <laughs> we'll say hi to Brad there. Hey, babe, Braddy. <laughs> Tell us who else is watching. Who's that? Samuel oh. Garcia. Hi, uh, Sam. And Rob Macklin Bar. Yeah. Berg. Yep, yep. And my brother Tom and Jesse Marquette. Hey, daughter Jesse. And Apollo's son. Apollo's son, Brian. Good to see you back on there. He's in the Tampa area. Uh, you know Macklin Ball. He's mm-hmm. a, uh, I've not met him yet, Rob, but thank you for yep. staying curious and following what we're doing here at the American Space Museum. And uh, we hope Chris Callie's watching. If not, we'll make sure he watches the rerun of this yep. thing on there. I'll give him a shout. Give him a shout there. Uh, we have got a major announcement concerning Cali space art next week. You're going to love it. Well, these guys land after eight days in space. They they uh, whip on a shave and and clean up a little bit, put the blues on, and they the the brass that's the brass the military brass towed them out there for a little speech, huh? Look at that lousy my hair blowing, baby. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> that was there was still some wind that day. I can remember, but it wasn't bad enough like it was the day before. They landed at uh, nine oh four. So is this uh, a yeah, it was probably. Noon or is it like yeah, 10 o'clock? Yeah, it, it didn't seem like it was that long. I mean, it could have been maybe an hour or so because Which, the, again, the wise. Which, again, this is 1982. Blows my mind a little bit that, wow, they're out there on the tarmac talking to the, the press that soon after uh, eight days in space. So yeah. A lot of, still a lot of unknowns, not so much with the physiological because we'd spent time in space on Skylab and so mm-hmm. forth. But. Uh, uh, which Jack Lausma was a Skylab astronaut. We he can't was. forget that. Uh, uh, Skylab 2. Uh, and Gordon Fullerton uh, had other missions. Hey, Marie. And, that's uh, his wife. Hey, she's, Marie. She's we're going to see her there. Buddy. By the way, both of these gentlemen were involved in the approach and landing tests. Fullerton was one of the alts, wasn't he? Uh, With the, yeah, him yeah. and uh, uh, Fullerton. And Hayes. Uh, Hayes were Jack, a team. Jack didn't fly. So. There's your brother Tom. Yep. And yourself. Uh, I'm wearing a Gene Wright vest here. Is that is that Gene Wright? That uh, is a fashions Gen- there. That Hi, is Gene. A, that's a Gene Wright, and He's that's a also awesome a Michelle teacher. Roush shirt that my brother's got okay. on, I believe. So tell us what's going on here at UC uh, Big, Big Jack. Bad Jack there. Well, that was out at Space Fest, and we gave him. That's that one of the prints that uh, my brother had made for him of our remote shot of his launch. And we had signed it for him, and we gave him a copy, and then we also gave Gordon Fullerton's widow, Marie, a copy. Yep. There she is. Yep, so that's that's her shot. There, well, there, there's that's... always some perks to being around people uh, that uh, are, quote, famous or are famous in their genre, like, of course, an astronaut. And you've gotten to know Jack Lausma pretty well, and, and tell our Stay Curious uh viewers out there uh, just how well you know this guy well i was fortunate enough to be invited by his daughter mary another great friend hey mary if you're watching the replay you're probably not watching it live she's a she's a cardiac nurse but she's great she's having a heart attack watching you on here (laughs) that's it but she's uh (laughs) she uh we got (laughs) well she was actually out there at the landing she was just a little kid at the time Uh and i i didn't didn't know jack or his family like i know him now when he was flying um but got to know them over the years through different events like space fest and scholarship foundation events here in florida and in houston um, Jack lives in Texas, in Kerrville, actually, and Mary's in, uh, in Houston. But just got to know them over the years from being at different events. And I, uh, my brother and I are the, were the official photographers for Space Fest, so we got to know a lot of these guys because we the always— The Poor family, Kim and, Poor, yep. awesome artist. Yep, uh, and that, Sally. Uh, and, they had yep. and wife Sally, and they had that at uh, Tucson at their uh, facility there. Yep. Yeah. So we just got to know them over the years, and um, Jack's daughter, Mary, contacted me, oh, I guess about three months before his 21st birthday, and it was right before COVID shut everything down. It was that February, right before the 21st COVID. birthday, wink, wink, being actually 44. Eight, 84. Or yep, 80, he would, yeah, 84. Yep, 84, he would have been 84. Because I mean, he's a, uh, a uh, leap, year uh, leap year baby. So they, they flew me down to photograph his birthday. For the, oh, okay. for the weekend and 
that was really, really special, and I'll, I'll cherish that, those yeah, memories forever. Yeah, I cherish just... meeting him with the Apollo group, and we hope to effort him and have him on next week to talk about his mission. We're trying to do that. He Great said guy. He, he'd uh, do a Zoom with us. Or Great family. Go, I mean, yeah. the, all the kids, yeah. all his kids. and and. He actually drove a train from Moscow to Star City, 13 <laughs> stops or so, he said. <laughs> uh, the engineer let him run the train. The streetcar uh, stories. Uh, uh, he's, he's full of great stories. From Grand Rapids, Michigan, Jack. So we hope that you get a chance yep. to see your, your buddies here. Uh, and uh, no, uh, don't ask where Tom got his shirt. I want it too. Okay, so. Uh, but there's uh, uh, Jack Lausman's wife. Or, I mean, F Gordon Fullerton's yep, wife. Yep, Murray. All right. And uh, now, a little bit. Now we of get to the Hooter. Hoot Gibson, there, a wonderful astronaut, one of the most humble guys I understand you'll ever meet. That was yep. a fabulous astronaut commander in the early days of the shuttle. Yep. He retired as an astronaut. And then flew for Southwest Airlines as a pilot captain for many years. I mean, flying is in his how blood. How cool is that? Yeah. Well, he also does that sport racing he did thing. The P fifty one Mustang uh, Nevada Air Races. All right. Well, tell you know about him, and I'm talking well, about him. Well, no, us that's about fine. He's he's an award winning guy. He's had he has ninety five octane running through his veins. I think instead of blood, he's, he's he married to Ray Seddon. She's uh, his that's wife. Not. And my brother had this idea, and we presented him this book that we had printed up of all of his missions, shots that we have taken over the, his career and our photographic career. And we presented him with this book um, that we had made of all his flights and gave it to him uh, at the last Space Fest in Arizona. Well, and how cool was, is that? Yeah. He's, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, his nickname is Hoot. And do you know where that comes from? That's a uh, Western. That's uh, correct. That's from a Western uh, A cowboy, cowboy Western hero named Hoot. Marty, I don't know Hoot's last name, but he was a Gene Autry uh, competition at the time. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, Was he a Gibson, too? Was it Rob? Cause it, yeah. I guess it was Gibson. It was yeah. Gibson. It yeah, was that's why I got Hoot him. Gibson. And, Robert. and they called him that as a little boy is what I read in his biography. I, I did meet him at the last... Uh, time that the scholarship foundation okay. had the, the thing here which is about my first year here okay and i was so wet behind the ears i couldn't uh <laughs> hardly stand up seeing 15 astronauts in one place uh i was so excited about that but uh, he's awesome well, he's a great guy there, so. great guy well we've enjoyed a great conversation with mark usiak freelance photographer lancaster pennsylvania uh we've talked about his career a little bit the fabulous 40 years ago that he was out there uh, doing the landing. Uh, did you ever think that you'd be, uh, you know, involved in this, uh, you know? For so long? In so long, yeah. Well, hoping to. I mean, I've, I've always been interested in space, as my brother. And, um, you know, I, I got to give him a lot of kudos because, you know, him being a few years older than me and, and just tag, let me tag along with him to do saying you know do certain things and get interested in photography and um it's just great i mean we've, we've been fortunate that we could marry two different industry or two different interests photography and our love of space mm -hmm. put them two together and have met you know great people like you guys and marty and carlton and and it made a made a, a, a career about it marty yes a comment yeah carlton just looked it up and it was who gives it the cowboy. Okay, the cowboy okay. is Hoot Gibson. Thank you, Carl okay. Bailey, in our audience here. We had Jackie Dannenberg in our audience, whose husband was a right-hand person to uh, Von Braun. Von Braun mm. uh, Conrad uh, Dannenberg, look him up. Uh, and we had Laurel, Laura Shepard Churchley Church in here in the house. Uh, that's right, Alan Shepard's uh, daughter came in here to say hi to us. Uh, she came that's in great. to... Uh, personally respond to some email correspondence I've had with her. So okay. uh, we want her to on Stay Curious, and she agreed to be on it, uh, hopefully during uh, Women's Month here in, in March. But uh, we'll take her anytime. She's but she great. was genuinely excited to talk about her Blue Origin flight <laughs> and, uh, and her stories. father. <laughs> so we can't wait to have her on talking about Laura Churchley, uh, Laura Shepard Churchley in here. So. Uh, wow, we've had a great little time talking to you here. And Thank you. Uh, anything that we talked about that you wanted to... Uh, well, just hope everything goes good this week. 
Um, I think it may with the Artemis with rollout the Artemis of our roll. space launch system. Which, by the way, tell them where those four engines come from. They happen to come from the space shuttle. They've um, flown to space already. The engines numerous are times. Launch the, numerous times. And how many are left? Uh, what is there? Eighteen engines, I think, left. Like that. So they've got enough for four Artemis flights, and then they're at, they're actually making new versions of those shuttle engines, but non-reusable versions. So they'll be a lot cheaper to manufacture than the ones that they're actually flying now because they're once and done. And this is an unmanned flight of Orion to go around the moon and orbit the moon and then come back. And that's so important to test the heat shield, which they already did, heck, about six years ago with the the, uh, EFT-1. EFT-1. Uh, but and then then the flight after this that hopefully launches somewhere in June you said will be crewed and go well, to the moon. This well, the the one in June will be unmanned. Unmanned, just, yeah. yeah and I said if the one the in one, June is yeah, a success, then they could conceivably by the fall maybe. Well, I think I think the schedule is now into the following year. I okay. Think, I think that next one's going to be in twenty three. That's what they say, but. Well, there's no yeah. there's no space race or no. anything like that to go on, but uh, and we know that a, a a man and a woman are going to the moon, and one of them might be a woman of, or man of color, uh, and uh, they're training right now for those missions. Eighteen Artemis astronauts, nine of them women, nine of them men, all but uh, think three of them now flown in space. So, be exciting times. Uh, I did want to mention that you are a freelancer for what publications? We didn't talk about some of the publications well, you're involved with. A lot the of the publications dear to your heart. A lot of the publications are no longer in existence for the the shuttle stuff because it was all magazines back then. Um, but it's kind of come full circle. Uh, I do some work with uh, a website um, based here in Florida, but they draw from photography talent all over the country spaceflightinsider.com you should check out their website and page and uh, this mission I will be covering it for uh, the National Space Society and Ad Astra magazine they're amazing Ad Astra that's one of the longest functioning mm -hmm. uh, uh, societies of space yep uh, big shout out to Rod Pyle the editor in chief and good friend and um, appreciate, good. appreciate him on Stay Curious one day We'll get him down here. I believe he's in California. But well, what does we'll we talked there. to Houston? We haven't talked to California yet, Marty, but we talked to Cologne, Germany, uh, with uh, uh, Alex. Uh, uh, oh, Carl. Yeah, Alex Carl, yep. our our uh, European ESA, uh, he's, he's space agency Eurocom. So, uh, well, anyway, we've really enjoyed talking to you this time around. Thank you, and, sir, and appreciate your friendship and your brother's friendship personally and with the museum uh uh you know next time you come down we'll try to get you better company than carlton there to hang out with <laughs> that's uh, all right he didn't bring really. he didn't bring donuts either he did didn't he? bring donuts <laughs> to us there we all got faces burned by watching that that beautiful Booster roll out back. there but thank you carlton bailey we're going to have him back on and glad that he's had a little health scare and he's in good he's health in, there yeah he's a rock and uh, he's a uh, i'm going to uh uh, he sent me a, a Godzilla out at the pads, so we're going to stay in Curious. So I'm going to make sure that you all see that That's on it. Facebook. Thank you all for watching our Stay Curious program on Facebook, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, and Twitch. Tell your friends to follow us, subscribe to us, share us, and like mm -hmm. us because it's important to our nonprofit to reach out there. Karen Conklin, our executive director, we've been very busy getting our auction items out that we had a successful auction two Saturdays ago and uh, all the excitement about Laura Shepard Churchley being in the building and Jackie Dannenberg yeah. too so uh, and you guys too so Thank it's you. been a banner day here at the American Space Museum hopefully your favorite nonprofit you buy something on Amazon buy it on Amazon smile with our name so that uh, we get credit for that Marty my producer for over almost two years here anything that we need to know to take our stay curious friends out with we appreciate y'all watching us and staying curious. I'm your host, Mark Marquette, thanking Mark Usiak for being here and your your brother for uh, helping straighten me out on some of the technical <laughs> things here. You're, me too. We, <laughs> he I'm straightens sure me out. our Stay Curious watchers agree that we enjoy your photographer like this gorgeous 
evening shot of uh, the shuttle STS-3 Columbia behind us here, taken 40 years ago. And uh, uh, we love that. So tomorrow, Thursday, we'll do some throwback Thursday for you all. And, of course, we'll be back to what? Bridge, Bridge the, the space, space between us. us. Thank you for watching.